Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. Read the miracle, recite the Quran. Recite it every day and do read it loud. The verses of Quran are all Muslim's pride. This miracle was revealed over a long time span. Sent from Allah to an angel, then to a man. That man was Muhammad, the best of creation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhin astafa. La siyama al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. All praise due to Allah alone, who all praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters everywhere, welcome to a new edition of Correct Your Citation. I would like also to welcome our studio guest, Sheikh Ismail Dinu uh, Hamdi, brother Hamdi from Bosnia. Bosnia and Samir from Bosnia as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Barakallahu fikum. And as usual, inshallah, we'll seize this opportunity to begin by listening to a beautiful recitation to the verses which we plan to explain their meanings from Surah Al Hash. We'll continue what we started in the last episode. Today, inshallah, Sheikh Ismail uh, will recite from ayah number 6 through ayah number 10. Please, Sheikh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أفاء الله على رسوله منهم فما أوجفتم عليه من خير فما أوجفتم عليه من خيل ولا ركاب ولكن ولكن الله يسلط رسله على من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير ما أفاء الله على رسوله من أهل القرى فلله وللرسول فلله وللرسول ولذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل وابن السبيل كي لا يكون دولة بين الأغنياء منكم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم يبتغون يبتغون فضلا من الله ورض وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من قبلهم يحب من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا 
ويؤثرون ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون والذين جاءوا من بعدهم يقولون ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم جزاك الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم أفيو important words would like to learn and uh, their origin and their derivatives before we indulge into the tafsir of these verses. Ayah number 6 and ayah number 7 began with the same verb in the past tense which is afa'a. Uh, ayah number 6 says wama afa'a while ayah number 7 says ma afa'a. So we're about to study the word Al-Fay and Afa'a. Al-Fay is the name of the war spoils which are collected from the enemies without fight, without cavalry or camillary, without an expedition. It was concluded due to a treaty or peace treaty so that there was no actual battle. There was no fighting or bloodshed between the two parties, Muslims and their enemies. So whatever money or wealth or war spoils they collected from the enemies, such as what took place during the battle of Banu and Nadir. It's a battle, but without fight. They accepted the truce and they gave their wealth, their homes to the Muslims. So that is called fay. And the verb, the past tense that we have here, afa'a which means literally restored. You will find it in many of the translation gave. But the most ideal term for afa'a, that means Allah restored. Why? Because Banu Nadir, the Jewish tribe in al Madina, had a treaty with the Prophet ﷺ. And when they betrayed, and they did not fulfill their part of the treaty, this money has become belonging to the Muslims. So, as a result of the agreement, they gave away and they dropped their right in their money. So they left al Medina and they were exiled, leaving their homes for uh, the Muslims. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ Whatsoever Allah, the Almighty, restored to his prophet or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also the word al fay has another meaning in Arabic which is al zil And due to the fact that they share, they say, they share the same uh, meaning, that they share the same term. al zil or the shadow of an object, it withdraws sometimes and it expands some other times. It goes and it comes. Similarly, al fay And we will learn how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered al fay to be distributed for this reason. Then the next vocabulary we have is aw jaftum. Still in ayah number 6. Fama aw jaftum. Aw jaftum means you made expedition. Fama aw jaftum. That means you collected this fay without sparing an expedition. Then the word Dulatan in ayah number seven, Kay la yakuna Dulatan, which means perpetual or circulation to be in a circuit. That will explain the effective cause 
behind the divine wisdom of distributing al fay in this particular way as we will come to study during the tafsir insha'Allah azajal the word tabawwa'u in ayah number 9 wal-lazina tabawwa'u al-dara wal-iman tabawwa'u means they settled they stayed there as dwellers of these homes tabawwa'u al-dara they settled in al-madina they were the original dwellers of al-madina the city of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the ayah is referring to al-ansar or the supporters who lived in medina before the migration of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the immigrants وَيُؤْثِرُونَ once again plural in ayah number 9 وَيُؤْثِرُونَ الْإِيثَار is to prefer or to give preference so وَيُؤْثِرُونَ they give preference to others over themselves so the ayah is speaking about al-ansar they give preference to whom? to al-muhajirin, to immigrants over themselves yu'thiruna al-ithar is a wonderful quality and a beautiful trait of the true believers the following word we have with us is khasasah khasasah walau kana bihim khasasah still in ayah number 9 the line before the last in page number 546. Khasasa means poverty or in privation. So even though they are themselves in need, but they still give preference to their brothers in Islam because they are more in need than their own selves. We have the word shuh in the last line in ayah number 9. وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ الشُّحْ means covetousness or stinginess and الشَّحِيح is a person who is a miser person a tired person who barely spends whether on others or even on himself and his family members الشُّحْ is البُخْ stinginess and the last word we have is in ayah number 10 which is غل it lies in the verse وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا it is an invocation do not put in our hearts hatred غِل means hatred against others here do not keep any غِل in our hearts towards the believers and now with the tafsir part quickly inshallah for the sake of time in the last episode we spoke about the expedition or the battle of Bani and Nadir and why they were exiled and uh, the story of Bani and Nadir at large now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and he reminds the believers in ayah number six it was Allah's favor upon you that he gave you victory over those guys the Jewish tribe of Bani and Nadir who used to think of themselves that they are unbeatable. And similarly, the rest of the Arabic tribes back then in the area, they thought Banu Nadir or Khaybar and these guys uh, are unbeatable. They are very powerful. They have fortresses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated them to the extent that they were exiled and they gave up on their positions without having to fight out of fear. One of the qualities which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was given and no Prophet was given before him was نُصِرْتُ بِالرُّعْبِ مَسِيرَةَ شَهْرٍ Once the enemies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi know that he is approaching them a month, once he advances, a month before he reaches there they will be defeated because of horror that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is marching down towards them. The second quality is also pertaining battles, which is أُحِلَّتْ لِيَالْغَنَائِمْ الْغَنَائِمْ means the war spoils. So الْغَنَائِمْ is the general term, and الْفَيْ is also war spoils, but it is specifically in case that the war spoils were collected without having to fight, without cavalry or camelry, as the ayah says. In ayah number 41 of Surah Al-Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, 
how to distribute al ghanaim plural of ghanima which is the war spoils he said wa a'lamu anna ma ghanimtum min shay'in fa anna lillahi khumusahu wa lirrasuli wa lidi alqurba wa liyatama wa almasakin wa bin as-sabil in kuntum amantum billahi ayah number 41 of surah al-anfal so the ayahs uh, discusses that whenever Muslims fight against their enemies, they have the right to utilize the war spoils. Al Ghanima, Ghanim Tum, and the ayah, mashallah, is on the screen. Ghanim Tum. So, this is Ghanim in case that you had to fight with the enemies, similar to what happened in the Battle of Bad, the Battle of the Trench, the Battle of many battles. So, whatever they collect of Ghanim. To be divided into five parts. One part, one part stated in this ayah, number 41, is to be given to Allah, to His messengers, to the kindership of the Prophet ﷺ, Banu Hashim and Banu uh, Al Muttalib, and to be given to the poor, to the orphans, the wayfarers, and Al Masakin. Wonderful. So, one fifth of the Ghanima normally will be given in this direction. And when we say Lillahi to be given to Allah and to His Messenger وسلم, means that it will be redistributed among the poor people of the Muslim society because Allah does not take any ghanima, Allah does not take any wealth. Wonderful. So, with regards to Al Fay, which Muslims may collect from their enemies without fight due to a truce or an agreement, it will be only treated as this one-fifth of the ghanima. So the warriors or the Muslim soldiers would not get any part or share of that. Rather, it will be all distributed amongst the poor and the needy, amongst the orphans and those who are wayfarers and desperately uh, in need. فَمَا أَوْجَفْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَيْلٍ وَلَا ركاب. He did not have to fight. He did not pursue this uh, or obtain this due fighting. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُسَلِّطُ رُسُلَهُ, رسله عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives power to his messengers over whomever he wills. And finally in this ayah, وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And Indeed, Allah is able to do all things, has power over all things. Wonderful. Then, in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will explain how the fay, we already learned the meaning of the fay, how the fay should be distributed, whether pertaining the fay in the case of the battle of Ban al-Nadir, or in any other case where Muslims may collect fay, or spoils without fighting against their enemies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in this ayah, ayah number 7, and in the beginning of ayah number 8, will stay the categories of those who are eligible for al-fayt. مَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى From the people of the township. Number 1, فَلِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وابن السبيل وستوب هير ان جمت اي نمبر 8 للفقراء المهاجرين the eighth category is for the poor immigrants okay the explanation لله وللرسول لله to be distributed once again amongst the poor and for the public affair or benefit of the entire ummah prepare the army spend on the mujahideen feed the needy Take care of the orphans. وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى We say, ذِي الْقُرْبَى أَيْ قَرَابَةُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. The kindership of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. بني هاشم and بني المطلب. واليتامى means the orphans. والمساكين and not any يتامى by the way. Not any orphans. Rather, the orphans who do not have a guardian, who do not have wealth to support them. Because if some child has been orphaned and his father, the person who died, left for him plenty of wealth, this person, even though he's an orphan, but there is the kaju in his wealth. 
So we're not supposed to support him financially. Rather, we'll support him physically and spiritually, look after him, take care of him, and so on. But financially, he's already settled. So you'll be supported from his uh, wealth or the wealth of his uh, guardian. Well, masakin and those who are in need. وَبِنِ السَّبِيلِ the wayfarer. كَيْ لَا يَكُونَ دُولَةً بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this classification different than the classification in ayah number 41 pertaining al-ghanima in general or the word spoils in general? The effective cause that the mujahideen, the warriors, those who are fighting for the sake of Allah would not get any share of the war spoils unless if they were fuqara, poor or needy, etc. كَيْ لَا يَكُونَ دُولَةً بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ And that means so that this money would not be or become a fortune used by the rich among you. What does it mean? So that the wealthy would not keep getting wealthy while the poor would get poorer and poorer and poorer. We do not accept the orphans and the weak and the handicapped to go to fight. So they will not get a share anywhere from the ordinary ghanima. But even though they are staying at home because of their disability or young age or a reason or another, they have a fixed share so that the poor will get a share and the rich will get a share. And the money would not be circulating perpetually only in one area like what's happening in capitalism due to the one interest. The rich will get richer and the poor will definitely get poorer and poorer until he files for bankruptcy and so begging people who are eating from the trash. This is a beautiful command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the end of ayah number 7. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Literally it means whatever the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa gives you, take it. And whatsoever the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa forbids you, abstain from it. And fear Allah thoroughly, Allah is severe in punishment. What does it mean that whatever the messenger gives you, take it? Uh, pertaining wealth and finance? Yeah. And whatever he forbids you from touching, do not touch it? Yes. But it also has a, another greater meaning pertaining every lawful and unlawful action or saying. Uh, in the Sawan Hadith, a woman came to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu an, criticizing what she heard that he curses a woman who plucks her eyebrows and who gets a, a tattoo and so on. You all know the Hadith and the story. Uh, he, she asked him, do you find this in the book of Allah or in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah? He said, uh, rather I find it, it is in the Quran. She said, by Allah, I read the Qur'an from cover to cover. I did not find such command or such prohibition. That do not pluck your eyebrows, do not get tattooed, etc. He said, have you read the Qur'an, you would have found it. She said, where at? He said, in Surah Al-Hashr, in Ayah number 7. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatsoever the messenger of Allah gives you, commands you to do, then you must do it, you must take it. And whatever the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, forbids you from or against, then you must abstain from it totally. And I, and I bear witness that I have heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ النَّامِصَةَ وَالْمُتَنَمِّصَةَ وَالْوَاشِمَةَ وَالْمُسْتَوْشِمَةَ وَالْوَاصِلَةَ وَالْمُسْتَوْصِلَةَ So he have heard this prohibition and the curse from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he treated it as if it was revealed in the Quran. Why? Because if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it, then it is that the fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who said it. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ um, Well, I would like to continue, but we ran out of time for the first segment. So inshallah, hopefully in the next episode, we'll continue with this beautiful ayat. But we're going to take a short break so that we have some time to spare. We can listen to your beautiful recitation. So stay tuned. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Ask Hoda. If you're still in Mecca or close by to Mecca, 
then you have to know that you are still in the state of ihram. As long as he, it is not for sale, mm -hmm. then he does not have to pay zakah for it. Forbade praying witter, similar to Maghrib prayer. Mm -hmm. So whoever prays witter three rak'ahs and sitting after the second rak'ah as if he's praying Maghrib prayer, this is forbidden, this is haram. To euthanasia is permissible with animals but not with human beings. If an animal is suffering, killing an animal for a legitimate reason is permissible. Both uh, are acceptable, but the majority say that after the rakur is the place of uh, qunut. But both was reported. Have a question or concern on your mind? Hoda TV decided, based on popular demand, he will be bringing you an additional episode of Ask Hoda with Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al-Hakim, live from Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrated that when Allah, glory be to him, wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him understanding of the religion and that Allah makes the path to paradise easy for those who seek knowledge. Preoccupied by work or family in the modern world, a Muslim may struggle to find time for acquiring Islamic knowledge. To ease this struggle, we are launching Hoda Academy to be your gateway to online Islamic e-learning. Enroll now and study from our renowned scholars. Learn Aqidah from Dr. Muhammad Salah. Learn Fiqh from Dr. Hatim Al-Hajj. Learn Hadith from Dr. Muhammad Saeed. Learn Tafsir from Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. And learn Arabic from our professional instructors. Successful graduates of Hoda Academy will go through a final test and eventually receive a certificate of completion. To enroll and learn more about Hoda Academy, please visit us online at hudaonlineacademy.com. Hoda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers begin with area code uh, 0020238552482449 and the email address is tajweed at huda.tv. What did you have uh, our first caller tonight? Brother Ibrahim from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Kayf al hal ya Ibrahim? Alhamdulillah. Okay, great. Go ahead and recite from ayah number six, please. Wa ma afa Allahu. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa ma afa Allahu ala Rasulihi bimun fama aw jamsum alayhi min al-qayyim. وَلَا لِكَافِرُهُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُصَلِّكُ رُسُلَهُ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ مَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى فَلِلَّهِ وَلِلرَّسُولِ وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَلِيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ كي لا يكون دولة بين الأخنياء منكم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عن فانتهوا واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب للفقراء المعاجلين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأبوالهم وأموالهم يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون حسبك يا إبراهيم جزاك الله خيرا pay attention to a lamb which is described as lamb شمسية as you all know that a lamb is either lamb شمسية the little lamb يعني 
other lamp shamsiya or qamariya and this uh, categorization based on the fact that a lamb as shamsiya is not to be pronounced it is stated in writing but not in reading for instance when you came to read ma afa allahu ala rasulihi min ahli al-qura falillahi walil rasul that's an error the second lamb is lamb shamsiya because it's followed by the letter ra so the lamb will not be pronounced similar to the lamb in the word as shams we write it down alif lam sheen mim sin but we pronounce it as alif sheen mim sin as shams that's why it's called lam shamsiya while in the case of al lam al qamariya you notice i said al qamariya from al qamar the lamb is to be stated both in writing and pronunciation and in reading. So we are not supposed to confuse this with that. So again, فَلِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَّسُولِ فَلِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَّسُولِ Why? Because originally when we say الرَّسُولِ وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولِ أَلِفْ رَا وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا This lamb is lamb shamsiya. بارك الله فيك وجزاك الله خيرا يا إبراهيم. بشير from Egypt. السلام عليكم and welcome to the program. آية number nine please. From آية number nine. والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوك شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون والذين جاءوا من بعضهم, من بعضهم يقولون ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم بارك الله فيك جزاك الله خيرا Just remember that we expand the matter of the منفصل to four So say ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم But I'm pretty much affected with your recitation ما شاء الله جزاك الله خيرا بشير from Egypt we have Brother Bilal from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program. Yeah, Bilal. Huh? Are you there? Uh, I'm here. Okay. Um, Insha'Allah, I would like for you to read from ayah number six. وَمَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ I, 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 I'm going to read Surah A'la. Mashi. الأعلى not bad بسم الله بسم الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي قلق فسوى والذي قطر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تهوش إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى تذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيتذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الأشقى الذي يطلع النار الكبرى ثم لا يبقى فيها ولا يعيا قد أفتح من تذكى 
وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصف الأولى صافي إبراهيم وموسى ما شاء الله يا بلال very beautiful I want you to practice today how to pronounce the letter حاء. We say صحوفي. Okay. سبح اسم ربك الأعلى. Otherwise, mashallah, I'm very proud of you. May Allah bless you and your parents. We have Sister Zainab from Nigeria. And we have a beautiful experience now with the Nigerian reciters. Mashallah, la quata illa billah. Zainab, salam alaykum. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Okay, sister Zaina, please recite from ayah number six of Surah Al-Hash. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أفا الله على رسوله منهم فما أوجفتم عليه من خير فما أوجفتم عليه من خير ولا ركاب ولكن الله يسلط رسله على من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير ما أفاء الله على رسوله من أهل القرى فلله وللرسول ولد القربى واليتامى ولد القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل كي لا يكون دولة بين الأغنياء منكم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم يبتغون فضلا من الله يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون. Thank you sister Zainab. بارك الله فيك. ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله. بارك الله فيك. هنا from United Arab Emirates. السلام عليكم and welcome to the program. وعليكم السلام. Okay, the remaining two ayat, ayah number 9 and 10, please, of Surah Al-Hash. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ بِالْحَقِّ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المصلحون والذين جاءوا من بعدهم يقولون ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم حسبك بارك الله فيك والجست Thin the line of ghillan a little bit. So it won't be ghillan, rather, will be ghillan lil ladina. Thank you. Barakallahu fiki hana from United Arab Emirates. Barakallahu fiki. Amina from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum. 
I made a deal with the Nigerians before, sister. You have to meet your TV set before you say assalamu alaikum. Are you ready? Now you can recite from ayah number six, Amin, if you can hear me. Okay. That was not the deal, though. Barakallahu fiki, Amin, please try again. Uh, take Deen, inshallah, start from ayah number six, please. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أفاء الله على رسوله منهم فما أوجفتم فما أوجفتم عليه من خيل ولا ركاب ولكن الله يسلط ولكن الله يسلط رسله على من يشاء ولكن ذا ون ستو كاونتس يو سيت نيكست تو شيخ اسماعيل ان شو فيد هي كان كيك يو على من يشاء ولكن الله يسلط رسله على من يشاء اوكي وانس اجين دينو اتس تو كاونتس as long as you see Sheikh Ismail nodding his head, he's not happy. Okay. Harakatayn. Ala. Ala man yasha. Ala man yasha. Tayyip, continue. Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Ma afaa Allahu ala rasoolihi min ahli al-qura fadillah. فللله وللرسول ولذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وبن السبيل كي لا يكون دولة بين الأغنياء منكم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب حسبك بارك الله فيك عامر from United Arab Emirates السلام عليكم عامر Okay We have sister Karima from Nigeria السلام عليكم Please try again brother عامر كريمة السلام عليكم Okay Please try again sister Karima as well I really like to hear from you brother Hamdi uh, we'll go ahead and recite from ayah number eight. Lil Fukara il Muhajirin. Ta'uzu bin lahimin al Shaytan al Rajim. Bismillahi al Rahman al Rahim. Lil Fukara il Muhajirin al Ladina Ukhriju min diarihim. الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم يبغون فضلا من الله يبتغون يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون 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 على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون. يا الله ما يكسر من الزن. Thank you so much. محمد from Iraq. السلام عليكم. السلام عليكم عليكم شيخنا. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Please go ahead and read from آية نمبر 10 والذين جاءوا من بعدهم. آية نمبر 10، أوكي. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاءوا من بعده يقولون ربنا اغفر لنا ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا ان ഫുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമുഹിമു
verses of Quran are all Muslims pride This miracle was revealed over a long time span Sent from Allah to an angel then to a man That man was Muhammad the best of creation We were chosen to be part of his nation He gave us a message and that was Islam So read this miracle, recite the Quran